Hello and welcome to Sparkle Tart. You're listening to Kate Palmer and today we're going to be making a really simple art journal page. Now this one is so much fun. I'm going to start with adding some paper or recycled packaging, napkins, anything you like to your art journal page. And I've just glued this down with some matte medium and then added some more matte medium over the top. Now we're going to get really grubby and start with some black gesso from Art Basics and some white gesso from Dina Wakely. Now what you'll need for this is your fingers and that's why I said we're going to get grubby because we're going to make a big mess and start this page with some finger painting. So what I'm going to do is add some white gesso specifically to the top of the page and I'm going to keep the top of the page mostly white and the bottom mostly dark. Begin the page by adding just white gesso randomly over, ne over the background. Now I'm going to use a paper towel to wipe a little bit off just so I get some variety in the colour. Once you've wiped enough of it off so that you can see a little of the background peeking through, add some of that black gesso and again use your fingers to spread it around the page. Now I haven't bothered to clean my fingers because I'd like some variation in the colour. So a little bit of black and a little bit of grey. You might choose to have a more stark page. If so, wait till the white gesso has dried before adding the black. Now I'm just having fun with finger painting here. The only thing I'm doing really technique wise here is adding a horizon line. And that's just a horizontal line somewhere on your page to draw the eye. Now you can see I'm keeping the majority of the bottom of the page dark and the top light. Now while that gesso is still wet, add a little bit of colour using Lindy's Stamp Gang sprays. And all I'm going to do on this is flick three different colours over. So I've got almost a black, almost a white and a purple because I love purple. No technique required, just take the top off the bottle and flick a little bit of colour over your background. Now you could also do this with a paintbrush, but I like doing it the simple way. Now make sure that these little spray dots are nice and dry by drying this with a heat tool. And also make sure that your background is beautiful and dry before moving on to the next step. Now the next thing we're going to do is enhance the horizon line. And I'm choosing to do that with some of the vintage collage paper from Lulu Art. And I'm just ripping it into little pieces and then using a bit more of that matte medium to glue it onto that line. Again, all of this is just making that a little bit more prominent. Now, so that it doesn't look like you've just slapped some paper on there, make sure you pick up a little bit of the colour from the Lindy sprays and wipe it over the paper while that matte medium is still wet. And it'll add a little bit of black or silver or purple into the colour of the paper and make it look like it's matching the background. Just a little trick. One of my videos without a little visit from Safi <laughs> or two. Now to enhance the horizon line further, I'm going to use some beautiful stamps from Dina Wakely and Stampers Anonymous. And I'm going to add some very, very fine pale coloring here. So I'm using a beautiful archival ink pad and just adding some visual pattern. So a little bit of this sort of scruffy scribble to each side and then I'm just going to change ink pads and enhance that horizon line further. So I'm going to make sure I stamp with the darker color on the lighter section and then a lighter color on the darker section but using the same little dot stamp. Now it doesn't have a lot of pattern in this stamp but it just adds a little bit of something and so that I don't get a weird flat line on the bottom of the stamp I'm masking my page with some of that vintage text paper. Now the final thing I'm doing is I've taken the stamp off the block and I'm just applying it with a finger and that allows you to get some really beautiful shapes and sort of just take the pieces of the stamp that you want and use those. That's a really Now to get some slightly bolder patterns I'm going to use gesso to ink one of my Dina Wakely stamps. So I'm just spreading it out on a little piece of plastic and then I can stamp into the paint and onto the journal page. Now you can use the stamp as is and get sort of a square blocky effect or you can mask off some of your background into whatever shape you like and just stamp into that sort of centerpiece, into the hole and create a more useful shape for your page. 
That's why I love these sort of pattern stamps so much. You can really do a lot with them. Now I'm just going to repeat this in a few different places on my page, just so it sort of matches. I don't ever like just having one of something. So add a couple of these pattern little marks. Next it's time to bring a little bling. So I'm going to just apply some gold paint and this one's my favorite one from Golden just to another one of these Dina Wakely stamps. Now it doesn't take very well when you use your finger so it gives you a really broken sort of abstracty look to the stamped image and this image is already kind of abstracty looking so I'm just adding a little bit of bling to the page. It won't even look like a shape when I'm finished. Now to enhance the gold just add a few swipes with your finger um, almost like you're cleaning your finger on the paper so that you get sort of a very light gold swish just to add a bit of interest to the background. Now it's time to add the main visual elements. I'm using another one of those beautiful Dina Wakely stamps and my Jet Black Archival ink pad. Now all I'm doing here is adding some random circles to my background um, just to give it something to look at, something pretty to work with. Now you can add single circles, you can add doubles by masking off some of the original circles. I'm also going to use an old tape insert, just a little piece of cardboard, to add additional smaller circles, just for something a little bit different. And if any of these don't work out quite the way you'd like, you can use a baby wipe and because you've got gesso and matte medium down on the page, you can actually remove some of that archival ink if you're quick. Now it won't all be gone, but you can certainly lighten it so that you can then stamp or color over it later. Now once you've used the little insert from a tape to add some additional smaller circles, you're ready for the next step. And it's so simple. Grab some crackle paste and my favorite tool, the finger, and just add crackle paste to the inside of some of those circles. You can choose any of them that you like, whatever looks good and feels right to you. I like to vary the thickness of the crackle paste in places so you get thinner cracks and fatter ones just so it looks a bit more interesting. Now once the crackle paste is dried grab some black paint in a fine liner applicator bottle and just scribble random things over the background. I like to add something that looks kind of like text but it doesn't really say anything just for a bit of fun. Now the other thing I like to do is draw around my circles just to highlight the shape and the pattern and it also helps break it up from the background just so they stand out a little bit more. Add as much or as little of this black paint using the fine liner applicator as you want and just keep going until it looks kind of a bit more interesting. Don't forget to rotate your journal page and add from different angles just to add to the interest. Now this is where we're at with the page so far. Up to this point, we've basically just used our fingers and the odd stamp and applicator bottle. It's interesting enough if you wanted a black and white page, just to leave it here. You've got pattern, you've got focal points, you've got a little hint of color just to make it look exciting. And of course that splash of gold. But being me, you know I can't leave things alone. I have to add something extra. And for me, I wanted to try a little pop of color on this black and white background to see if that would enhance the page. And I think you'll agree it does. Just wait and see what I do. <laughs> I've grabbed one of my new favorite products, which is Jane Davenport's Aqua Pastels. And I've just grabbed the pinky color and the purpley one. And I've used a water brush. I kind of feel like I'm cheating since I've used my fingers on the rest of the page, but I just wanted to make sure I got this beautiful and light. And it's Frida and a name I can't actually pronounce, so I'll make sure it's in the uh, little pop-up text here. And I've just added a bit of pink and a bit of purple just to some of those main circles, just for a bit of extra zing. I felt that it needed a touch more gold, so I'm using my gold paint in another one of the fine liner applicator bottles just to add a little bit of extra metallic. It tends to make some of the pages pop more, um, and I think it's just because it's a difference against the matte gesso, the black on the white, and the shine of the metallic gold. So it just sort of helps separate elements on the page. So I'm adding a little bit of gold to some of those circles that I really want to stand out. Now to highlight some of those circles further, 
I'm just using my finger and adding a tiny bit of a smear of gold over the top of that beautiful pink and purple and on some areas on the opposite side so I've got the pink and purple on one side and the gold on the other and I'm just changing it up depending on the circle just so it looks a little bit different and that smear of metallic just helps make them look beautiful and luxe and gorgeous but it still wasn't popping enough for me the pink and the purple against the black and the white wasn't enough which is really silly because all I'm about to do is add one more color and really change the look of everything so I've got my secret weapon which is my light patina color in the art alchemy paint now this stuff has like a duochrome effect and depending on whether it's on black or white or a color it can look a little different so it gives a gorgeous shimmer with quite a varied color now I've zoomed in here just so you can see how little of this product I'm adding but it makes an amazing result or amazing difference to the end result and I'm just adding the tiniest little bit to the edge of some of those circles and you can see it gives that beautiful shimmery blue in some areas and it almost seems to meld with the purple in others so pretty and it really enhances the look of all those other colors to the point where as you can see it makes the circles where I've added it really pop forward and those without it sort of fade a little bit more into the background and you almost need none of it it is you need such a light hand with this stuff for it to look amazing so between the pink the purple the gold and the blue it's made some of those main circles look stunning and against the black and the white in the background really makes that whole page sort of bring it forward a bit absolutely love this now there's only one thing left to do and I wasn't sure if it needed anything but I looked at it for a few days and I decided to add some of the Tim Holtz words now because this is in my journal and I don't want it to be so thick that I can't write on the back of the page I've just peeled like half of these little chipboard words off so I've taken off the back and just kept peeling off bits and bits of the chipboard until it was thin enough to stick onto my journal page and I've just done this with glossy accents so that it's really nice and well stuck and I don't have to worry about it coming off if I use heat on the reverse side of the page so at this point I'm going to call my page finished you've got the Jane Davenport aqua pastels and a little bit of shimmer and the art alchemy paint on those main circles over the crackle paste and it is just so pretty I'm loving the crackle under that color pair that with that amazing finger painted black and white gesso background and you've got a really simple page that's super fun to do and the color against the background just pops and if you're looking for a simple no stress page where you just want to have a bit of a fun and a bit of a play with some pretty products this is a great way to do it as long as you don't mind using your fingers <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed this simple art journal page and I'll be back soon with more.